In the pursuit of historical accuracy and an authentic representation of facts, objectivity is clearly the name of the game. Objectivity, however, is unfortunately presented on many occasions with a shroud of partiality, sometimes becoming obvious to the conditioned reader, while other times remaining ever-present in secrecy. The more one tries to abandon this biased approach to historical reporting, the more obvious it becomes that the subconscious possesses a near innate tendency to present information in a skewed fashion. Aviva Chomsky brings this phenomenon to attention in her incredibly insightful work, A History of the Cuban Revolution. With this text, Chomsky presents a chronologically ordered illustration of the Cuban Revolution that differs tremendously with popular U.S. opinion of the event, or rather, period in history. While Chomsky herself exhibits several partial stances throughout her book, this text sustains its academic value by presenting a narrative of the Cuban Revolution that, to most readers, is enlightening to say the least. Aviva Chomsky appears to be more than qualified to contribute in the discussion of the Cuban Revolution, considering her array of publications and her position as a professor of history and coordinator of Latin American, Latino, and Caribbean studies at Salem State College in Salem, Massachusetts. According to the college's faculty page, Chomsky has taken a great interest in the study of Latin America. She shows a particular interest in the study of how people collectively organize for social change, as well as how global economic forces affect individuals. And both of these avenues for research are addressed successfully in a history of the Cuban Revolution. Her knowledge of content is well established, and she demonstrates this on several occasions throughout this text. As previously mentioned, one fundamental theme of this book exists as a dichotomously stark contrast in opinion and understanding of the Cuban Revolution among Westerners, particularly those from the United States, and that of Latin Americans, although Chomsky does concede that scholars today hailing from the United States often do sympathize more commonly with their Cuban comrades. Even the concept of liberty, which obviously deserves mentioning in a study of rebellion and revolution, conjures different thoughts and understandings between Cubans and U.S. Americans. As Chomsky further elaborates, U.S. policymakers tend to use it to refer to freedom for private enterprise, while for Cuban policymakers it generally means freedom from U.S. interference referring to the U.S. political and economic domination of the island and to the Cubans who collaborated with the foreigners. Many on the outside looking in would wonder if political and economic freedom could even exist without a free market society, inciting Chomsky to defend the belief of several others that a free enterprise did not equate to those freedoms. With this text, Chomsky also wishes to denounce the simplification of the Cuban Revolution as a mere attempt to overthrow the existing government of the Batista regime and instill a Caribbean stronghold for communist expansion into the Americas. Instead, the author asserts, the Cuban Revolution, then, was made by people who believed they could change their society and their world. By overthrowing the old, unjust social order, and challenging the legacies of colonial rule, they can make history rather than being passive victims of their history. The widely popular revolutionary Che Guevara would expand on this belief, arguing against the materialistic and greedy characteristics of capitalism while envisioning a society motivated by unselfish goals. Illustrated by Chomsky time and time again throughout this piece, the revolution then existed as an attempt to instill a system that would benefit the masses while simultaneously ridding the country of all things detrimental. It is for these very reasons that many view the revolution in Cuba as a pursuit of autonomy rather than a falling for communism. There is a sufficient amount of this book dedicated to the experimentation and ultimately the implementation of socialism within Cuba. With the eradication of Batista, there were several varying opinions as to what sort of system would best suit the needs of the Cuban population. Chomsky reveals this variance as she explains. Some wanted merely an end to Batista's corrupt rule 
and a restoration of constitutional order with little fundamental social change. Others saw a more revolutionary opportunity in the collapse of the old order and the overwhelming popular mandate behind the new government. The process of establishing an entirely new governmental system would be filled with successes and failures, and Chomsky details this process quite thoroughly. Although Che Guevara and other Cuban revolutionaries most certainly held grand utopian goals and visions for the revolution's outcome, these aspirations did not fully come to fruition, which Chomsky annotates quite effectively throughout this text. In fact, these admissions of Cuban shortcomings serve to illustrate the fact that many of the issues brought to the forefront of the revolution are still in existence today. This understanding, paired with the historical background of Cuba detailed by Chomsky in a chapter devoted to the history of Cuba, confirms the author's belief that the revolution was more of a process than a war. This view of revolution as a process can be tied to the revolutions and rebellions of several other societies, particularly within Latin America, with the Cuban Revolution also centered around an attempt of the oppressed to rid themselves and their countries of corrupt leaders and unjust practices. Chomsky's description and coverage of the special period is one of the strengths of this text, detailing Cuba's fight to survive following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Understanding this period, the author explains, is fundamental for understanding the Cuban society of today. Chomsky elaborates on this time by stating, the generation that came of age during the special period tended to be less impressed with the revolution's achievements and more cynical about its contradictions. Social inequalities increased, and phenomena associated with pre-revolutionary poverty like prostitution and begging reappeared. The special period is marked by an increase in capitalistic programs and regulations, a trend that is still visible today, as well as an expansion of inequality resulting from some of the economic and social hardships felt during this stage. Despite the adversity of the special period, Cuba would defy the predictions of many and survive with their political system in hand, further demonstrating her perseverance. Despite her several successes with this text, Chomsky's work does leave slight room for improvement. As previously mentioned, the author comes across as overly sympathetic to the cause of the Cuban Revolution at times, which takes away from the objectivity displayed throughout the book. Although I found her references to the United States very interesting, it appears as though she was too focused on the role of the United States during this time and not focus enough on the several other countries who undoubtedly played a part of the grand scheme of things. These brief and minor oversights do not take away from the work's primary focus, however, to provide a clear-cut exposition of the Cuban Revolution. Aviva Chomsky's organization and her ability to concisely highlight several varying aspects of the Cuban Revolution are perhaps her two greatest achievements with a history of the Cuban Revolution. For those at the undergraduate level who have little background in Latin American affairs, this text is a wonderful introduction to a topic that is historically rich and diverse. Its compactness and readability make it ideal as a supplementary text to be used in any classroom wishing to better understand the revolution in Cuba that still very much exists today.